I'm going to talk about a massively parallel algorithm for minimum weight vertex cover. I'm Ce Jing, and this is joint work with Mohsen Gafari and Dan Nilis. First, let me introduce the model that we are working with, which is the MPC model. In this model, we're given an input graph G with N vertices and M edges, and we want to solve some problem on this graph. However, the graph is too large and it cannot fit into the memory of a single machine. So we have to use multiple machines to store the input and do the computation. Let's say that we have M machines and each of them has memory size S. We assume that the total memory of these machines is just enough to store the input. So we have S times M is roughly equal to M plus M which is the size of the input graph. At the beginning, the input graph is arbitrarily partitioned into M subgraphs of roughly the same size, and they are distributed among these M machines. Then the computation proceeds in synchronous rounds. In each round, each machine is going to perform some computation on the data stored on its local memory. And after that, uh, the machines will communicate with each other, and then they'll do the next round of computation and so on. Uh, here, the communication graph is the complete graph, which means that every pair of the machines can send messages to each other. The only restriction here is that the total message size cannot exceed the memory limit. So in each round, the total data sent from a machine is at most S, and the total data received by a machine is also at most S. In this model, we assume that the local computation is cheap and the bottleneck is communication. So we want to optimize the round complexity. Uh, this MPC model has been studied intensively in the past decade and it's known that it can support many useful primitives in only constant rounds, such as sorting, prefix sum, and multiple array queries in parallel, and so on. So in the following, when we're describing an MPC algorithm, we'll not go into details of the uh, low-level implementation. We'll only focus on the most important part of this model, which is the memory limit. Uh, we can see that if we are given more memory per machine, then it will be easier to design an algorithm and we can achieve better round complexity. In the literature, there are three memory regimes being studied. The first one is the strongly superlinear regime, where the memory parameter S is equal to n to the 1 plus delta for some positive constant delta, and n is the number of vertices. And we also have the near linear memory regime where S is roughly equal to N with some polylog N factors. And finally, we have the strongly sublinear regime where S is only N to the delta for some small constant delta. Next, I'll take the matching problem as an example and we'll look at some previous MPC algorithms. First, in the strongly superlinear regime, we can solve the maximal matching problem using only constant rounds. And in the near linear regime, uh, the first sublogarithmic algorithm was given by Chumai and others. They can solve the one plus epsilon approximate maximal matching problem in log log n square rounds. And later it was improved to log log n rounds. Recently, there is a log log n round algorithm for the harder problem, which is the maximal matching problem. And there is also an extension to the weighted version of the approximate maximal matching. In the strongly sublinear regime, uh, currently the best algorithm has round complexity root log n. In this paper, we will work in the near linear regime of MPC but we'll look at a different problem, which is the minimum vertex cover problem. A vertex cover of an undirected graph is a subset U of vertices 
such that every edge in the graph has at least one endpoint in the subset U. Here is an example. The three red vertices form a vertex cover of this graph. And we can easily verify that uh, this is the uh, minimum vertex cover. This problem is MP hard and the best known approximation ratio is two, which is optimal under the unique games conjecture. The vertex cover problem is closely related to the matching problem and their LP relaxations are dual to each other. So some of the matching algorithms can also work for the approximate minimum vertex cover problem. In near linear regime of MPC, uh, there is a log log n round algorithms for a two plus epsilon approximation of minimum vertex cover. And there is also a two approximation algorithm which follows from the maximal matching algorithm by simply taking all the matched vertices. In this paper, we will look at the weighted version of the minimum vertex cover. Each vertex V has a positive weight and we want to find the uh, vertex cover with minimum total weight. The previous log log n round algorithms only work for the unweighted version. And for the weighted version, previously the best known round complexity is log n, which follows from simulating PRAM algorithms. Now I'll describe our new result. We obtain a two plus epsilon approximation algorithm for the weighted version of the minimum vertex cover problem in only log log m over n rounds in near linear MPC, where m is the number of edges and n is the number of vertices. We remark that m over n equals half of the average degree of the graph which is smaller than the max degree delta. So our round complexity is not worse than the previous algorithms in log log n or log log delta rounds. And in some cases, our algorithm is strictly faster. Our technique follows the framework of the previous algorithm by Gaffari and others, which works for the unweighted case. We made some crucial changes to handle the weighted case and improve the round complexity to log log average degree. In the following, I will first describe the previous unweighted algorithm and then I'll highlight our new ideas. First, let's look at a local algorithm for unweighted vertex cover using the standard primal dual framework. We associate every edge E with a positive weight X of E. And uh, for every vertex V, we define Y of V to be the sum of the weights of its neighboring edges. This is the total incident weight of V. During the algorithm, we will maintain that Y of V is at most one. So X is a fractional matching of the graph. At the beginning, we set x of e to be 1 over delta for all the edges e, where delta is the maximum degree of the graph. And we can easily check that uh, this initialization is a valid fractional matching. And initially, all the edges are active. Then we will gradually increase the weights of the edges while maintaining the fractional matching property. In each round, we first check all the active vertices V. And if Y of V is at least one minus epsilon, which means that the constraint for vertex V is almost tight, then we'll freeze V and all its incident edges and uh, their edge weights will never change again. Then for all the active edges E, we will uh, increase their weights by an epsilon factor. We repeatedly do this until none of the edges are active, which means that every edge has at least one frozen endpoint. Then we can return all the frozen vertices as a vertex cover. To analyze the approximation ratio, 
we sum up the y values for all the frozen vertices. Each of them is at least one minus epsilon, and their sum is upper bounded by two times the total value of the fractional matching, since every edge is counted at most twice. And by uh, LP duality, the value of the fractional matching is not larger than the minimum vertex cover. So this shows that our solution is a two plus order epsilon approximation. Now we analyze the round complexity of this local algorithm. We observe that all the active edges have the same weight, which is one over delta divided by one minus epsilon to the number of rounds so far. Since x of e is uh, never greater than one, this means that uh, our algorithm must terminate in order log delta rounds. To get an efficient MPC algorithm, they use the round compression idea, that is uh, to compress many local rounds into one MPC round. The MPC algorithm proceeds in phases. In each phase, we define capital D to be one over the active age weight. Since X is a fractional matching, this means that the active degree of an active vertex is at most D. Then uh, we randomly partition the active vertices among root D machines. This ensures that each machine has at most order n edges in its induced graph, so it can store them using near linear memory. Then each machine somehow simulates the local algorithm by only looking at its own subgraph. It simulates i local rounds where i is a small constant times log d. Since uh, each local round increases the active edge weight by an epsilon factor, after i rounds, the weight will increase by a factor of d to the 0.05. Then if a vertex is still active, it must have degree at most d to the 0.95. So after each phase, the graph gets sparsified and we keep doing this until the maximum degree drops below some polylog n. And then we can solve the remaining graph on one machine in only one MPC round. Initially, d equals delta, so the number of phases is order log log delta. Okay, so how to simulate the local algorithms? They introduce two nice ideas. The first one is the following. Since every neighbor of vertex V has one over root D probability of landing in the same machine as V, we can sum up the weights of its neighboring edges on the same machine and multiply it by root D and get an estimate of its total incident weight on the whole graph. Using some concentration inequalities, they manage it to show that this estimate is not so bad. And the second idea is that when checking the constraint for each vertex V, instead of comparing it with a fixed threshold one minus epsilon, uh, they pick a random threshold so that with good probability, they can avoid some bad events. Using these two ideas, they can simulate up to order log D rounds in a phase without deviating too much from the actual algorithm. Now we'll describe our new improvements. Uh, first, we observe that we can make fewer partitions. Uh, instead of dividing into root capital D parts, we can divide it into root small d parts, where small d is one over n times the sum of active degrees. And the memory bound still holds. Intuitively, every edge has one over root d squared probability of landing in a particular machine. So the expected number of the edges in this machine 
is the number of active edges over root d squared, which is order n. So the bound still holds in expectation. And if d is not too small, uh, we can actually show a high probability bound. Making fewer partitions uh, means that it's easier to coordinate with the machines and we can make progress faster. So this observation suggests that we can improve the round complexity to log-log average degree. Next, let's see how to handle the weighted case. Let's assume that uh, the vertex weight WV is at least one. So the previous local algorithm still works after making some simple modifications. But the problem is that the round complexity of this local algorithm would become log delta times vertex weight, which is uh, not good. To fix this, we use a non-uniform initialization. For edge UV, we set the initial edge weight to be the minimum of WU over degree U and WV over degree V. We can easily check that uh, this gives a valid fractional matching. And uh, we can see that uh, the local algorithm will terminate in log delta rounds. Then let's analyze the MPC round complexity. We have replaced the capital Ds by small Ds. And uh, now we want to show that small D also drops by a D to the 0 0.05 factor after each phase. Since uh, initially small D is the average degree of the input graph, this will show that the total number of phases is only log log m over n. To prove this claim, first we note that the previous argument in unweighted case no longer works here because now the active edges can have different weights. So we need a different proof here. We orient all the active edges and turn the graph into a directed graph. We direct an edge from u to v if wu over degree u is smaller than wv over degree v at the beginning of this phase. Otherwise, we reverse the direction. Now, the incident edges of V are divided into two groups according to their directions. We look at the outgoing edges from V, which have the same weights, WV over degree V over uh, 1 minus epsilon to the number of rounds. And then using the property of a fractional matching, we can show that the out degree of V is at most degree V times one minus epsilon to the number of rounds, which is degree V over D to the 0 0.05. Then we can upper bound the total number of remaining edges by summing up all the out degrees. So we can show that D drops to D to the 0 0.95 after this phase. We still have an issue here. Due to uh, our particular way of initialization, the edges with low degree endpoints have big weights. And previously we mentioned that our simulation is based on the concentration of the local incident weight. Here, if the summation contains a large term, then it will uh, introduce a big variance and affect the concentration. To solve this issue, we only consider high degree vertices during the simulation. The other low degree vertices with degrees smaller than d to the 0.95 are inactive in this phase and they do not participate in the simulation. Uh, they are not frozen yet and they may become active again in later phases after uh, d decreases. And we can show that even though we are ignoring some vertices, we can still make enough progress in each phase. This is because the inactive edges are neighbors of low degree vertices, 
So the total number is at most n times d to the 0.95. And we can also upper bound the number of the other remaining edges as shown in the previous slide. So you can still uh, show an upper bound on small d after this phase. To summarize, we have three new ideas. Non-uniform initialization of edge weights and analysis of progress via orienting edges and ignoring low degree vertices. Here we have an open problem. Can we design a two approximation algorithm for minimum weight vertex cover? That is, can we achieve epsilon equal to zero? Thank you.